Ladies and great British guitar, well, guitar lovers, at least guitar design lovers, uh, today we've got on the bench my buddy Joe's Burns Marquee, which has got a problem with, well, it went to a local guitar tech for a setup and restring, and it came back. What's going on with that? I've no idea. I don't know what's going on with that. I have had one these in before, and I did have to do something to it to make it to make it sit correctly, but I can't remember what. So let's slap it on the bench and see what happens. So first of all, let's have a look at the overall uh, playability of the thing. Let's have a look at the string height for a start. One point seven five no hang on it's a bit no that's no, two that is uh, can we see I don't know yeah so we're two at the 12th threat which is um, well what's the word I'm looking for wrong ok let's have a look so as memory serves these are oh look it's got some new and incorrect screws I've probably got something to match that up. Uh, yeah. So, as I recall, these are sort of... They've got a feel somewhere... These vibrato systems have got a feel somewhere between uh, a Bigsby and uh, a Fender Synchronous Tren. But it's there are two fulcrum points. So, like, two little knife edges. And they are brilliant when you know, when set up right. So, oh, let's have a look inside. I can see four springs in there, which looks like at least one too many, if you actually want the vibrato to work. Let's just have a feel. No, 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 it's okay. So why are you sitting too proud like this? There's a reason for everything. So we want that block to come down either. Hmm, investigation time. Okay, so we've got the strings off and, you know, Everything looks like it should be okay, but of course we've still got these springs on here. So we'll have those off and see what's going on inside. All right, so what we've got inside here is we've got this block and we've got these two little, if that will ever go in focus, and we've got these two little fulcrum points here or is that, should that be full crap? I'm not sure. But certainly, uh, when I pop those in, and I put the bridge in, as we can see, that just does not sit right. So, let's see what's going on. Hmm... Strange. So, uh, so in, so inside here, you can see these two um, little insert points. And what should happen is, of course, is that these little because of course this is called. If we can rub some of the grime off here, uh, this is called the point classic, and I assume that the point refers to these uh, little pivots here. So they should sit inside there, which obviously allows your bridge to move freely under tension with the springs, which has to be balanced, which is a bit of a bit of a, a long-winded job, but nevertheless, it's, you know, it's achievable. You've just got to keep retensioning. So when I sit that on there, and they are in there, the bridge is still protruding. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. 
I'm rather hoping that I've identified the area of difficulty. So you will see that inside the body there are these two little drilled out areas here which should allow that, so here's your little bar that keeps the pivots in and the bottom of these does not or do not sit in do not sit neatly inside those little holes that I just showed you so we'll have a little bit of a faff with that and see what happens uh, so um, we've taken a little bit of material out of the counter sinks and they are of course floating trams but that is can we see that let me turn it around but that is pretty much where I want to see that that looks rather rather pleasant instead of a great big chunk of metal sticking outside of the hole so let's uh, get it all buttoned up restrung give it a bit of a whistle up and see what it's like then so before I go button it, buttoning it back up, uh, I shall do the normal test that we do. We'll uh, get the fret rocker on and have a look, make sure that all the frets are straight. There's a little bit of a wobble there, but not much. I'm not concerned about that. That's pretty good. All of there. Tiny, tiny, tiny wobble. Yeah, I'd say that they're okay. Pretty much mm, again a tiny 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 bit and um, well give the frets a little bit of a polish and uh, see what it sounds like okay so just a little quick aside uh, so what I will do before I button this back up is I will give it a bit of a polish up and make it all nice and sparkly I do not like this product. It is horrible, it's evil, and it gets into the grains, gets into the pores, and you can, without removing material, this, it, I can not recommend it. Uh, not on a guitar, of course, it's got its own purpose. Uh, on a black guitar, though, uh, I do like to use a teacup product, and it's this one. It's the colour matched thingy. It, so uh, that will, in fact, uh, sharpen it up quite nicely. On other uh, guitar colours, I use this. It is absolutely superb. It will remove that initial layer of grime and leave nice shiny paintwork underneath in most circumstances. Please, you know, try it on a concealed area first, as they always tell us. Uh, the other thing is, is that as we can see, We've got a maple neck here. Now, the favoured uh, product to use on uh, necks to condition them and what have you, so, th so this is not only maple, but it's also uh, lacquered as well. For goodness sake, do not use lemon oil on a maple neck because it won't hurt it. Well, it won't hurt it, but it'll make it look unpleasant. So I use a... Oh, a product that I don't just have to hand now. Uh, so use a on an uh, there we go. So on a maple uh, product, uh, I use this. Uh, so you want to make sure that it's a non-silicon product and that it's all natural. And this stuff is absolutely brilliant for those. Right onward. So in conclusion, here we are now. I'll show you from this side because you can see it better. Uh, so in conclusion now we have the classic point set exactly as it should be set and the string height action is now exactly where we like it at 1.25 and the button you know the bottom line is is that all that was actually required was a couple of millimeters of just drilling out though uh, just countersinking for those little fulcrum uh, pivots and um, what was the other thing that we had to do? Um, oh, the, yeah, there was. I had to have the neck off because the neck wasn't straight. So, you know, we've done that, but that's only a 
five minute thing. And um, yeah, oh yes, and tightening up the two little grub screws that hold those those little pivots in place. And it just reminds me, you see, of the story in 1970 when we had moved to a new house in South Shore Blackpool, which was more or less directly opposite the Pleasure Beach, and we had uh, oil-fired central heating, wish I had that now, and uh, there was a great big dint in the tank, and so Dad called a guy up to come around and fix it, and the bloke came out, and he had a look at it, went back into his van, got a lump hammer, and went to the opposite side, and clouted the bottom right-hand corner with his hammer, and the, and the dint just went popped out. I mean, I said, that is brilliant. What do I owe you? The bloke said, 10 quid. 1970, 10 quid was an awful lot of money. And he said, but you've only used it with an hammer. And the guy said, yeah, but it's knowing where to hit it. And with that, I shall bid you a fond farewell. And I'll see you at the weekend. Hopefully we'll review this at the weekend. So uh, it's uh, adios amigos. Ta-ra.